Hello, thank you for joining me. Got my new mask on. I'm on a class 465. We're going to Tunbridge Wells to have a look around the town and of course to have a trip on the Spa Valley Railway. Now we just departed High Brooms, which is in the area of Tunbridge Wells. It's a station in the northern suburbs of the town. And we're just about to come to the original site of Tunbridge Wells Station. There's probably not much to see, but it would have been somewhere here. It was a temporary station opened in 1845. Then they built the line through Grove Tunnel in 1846 to the current station. So the temporary station would have been around here somewhere. We're about to pass through Grove Tunnel and then when we get to Tunbridge Wells Station, I'll show you a couple of things there. I'm going to walk to the Spa Valley Railway. Uh, so this is Wells Tunnel. So we're now um, beyond that original temporary terminus. So when we get out here, I'll show you how the station is effectively sandwiched between the two tunnels. Um, and then we will walk to the Spa Valley Railway. My plan is, as we go to the Spa Valley Railway, we'll try and follow the old track bed. Now, I'm not expecting to be able to walk along it as such, and part of it is through a tunnel. My plan is that we will see it where we can see it. So, from what I've seen, it looks like there's a public footpath that crosses it and there's a couple of roads that cross it so we'll have a look at that make our way to Tunbridge Wells West so after Grove Tunnel which we shall see in a moment the Tunbridge the line through to Tunbridge Wells West and on to Airridge which is now the Spa Valley Railway branched off it was quite a late closure Please check that you have all of your personal belongings with you when leaving the train. So here we are, this is Tunbridge Wells Station. I think this is the High Street, or there is a main road that also goes right over the top of the station. So here we go, just arriving. So there should be, um, Grove Tunnel should be right in front of us when we come out of the station here. Right down at the front of the train. So I could show you the tunnel, so... Here we go, and there is Grove Tunnel. So just beyond Grove Tunnel was the junction for what is now the Spa Valley Railway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, once I've exited the station, I'm going to walk up over the tunnel and um, we'll have a look at the park on top. It's called the Grove Park. And then from there, we'll, we'll work our way down to the other side of the tunnel and on towards the Spa Valley Railway. So here we are outside Tunbridge Wells Station. This is the bridge I was showing you which goes right over the platform. Now what we're going to do, as I said, we're going to go up over the top of the tunnel to the Grove Park so we can see what's above the tunnel before we go down to the other side. So the railway runs right under here like this. So it's um, quite a subterranean station. And um, well, if we get round here, we can see the Grove Tunnel again just there. So. I'm going to go up this street up here to the park above Grove Tunnel. So here we are in the Grove Park. Somewhere down below us is the railway line. It would be, it's, it looks like it could be over the other side of that wall, but it's not. The tunnel is further that way, but it literally runs directly under us like that. Now, down there obviously is the southern mouth of the tunnel. And that's where the junction for the Spa Valley Railway was. I've had a look. I don't think we can get too close to where the junction was. But what we'll do, we'll go to the first opportunity where we can cross the track bed of that quarter of a mile or so of railway line that hasn't been reopened by the Spa Valley Railway. The reason being, really, is although the track bed's there, well, part of the Sainsbury supermarket has been built on it, the rest of the track bed's there, but there just really is nowhere you could um, terminate a train so hence that's why they terminate at the new Tunbridge Wells West Station but we'll, we'll have a look when we get there um, in the meantime we're walking some lovely Georgian houses a lovely form of oak tree here I'm gonna walk on up there and uh, we're gonna go and try and find the section of Spa Valley Railway that isn't a heritage line So I just thought I'd come down this road here. I know I said I'm going to go and look for the old railway, but I thought, I wonder if I could see the other end of the tunnel. Look what I found. 
Grove Hill Tunnel Country Portal. Now down below there is the railway. So this fence is the network rail boundary and um, we're not going to get a brilliant view but you might just be able to see the railway line down there and the tunnel portal. So it would have been, if all these trees weren't there we might be able to have seen it better. But there you are, you can see the, the railway lines now. Um, I'm not going to wait for a train to come. The junction would have been there. So this, the line to the Sparvey Valley would have turned off just over there. So let's go and find that bit of track bed that led to the Spa Valley Railway. So I've just come down through this residential area in my search for the old railway tunnel. Found this road here, up a Cumberland Walk, and a uh, very bent public footpath sign. So this is a public footpath. This should cross the railway track bed, which definitely does cross the railway track bed. In what form, I'm not sure. Um, it looks like it could have been a road. I'm assuming there's some houses down here. You could effectively drive a car here, but when I did my research, I saw at the other end there's some bollards, so you can't drive all the way through. So um, I really am finding this out as I show it to you. So somewhere, it should be round here, the railway line used to cross. I can just see what is possibly a bridge, so um, just up here. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, you can't drive beyond here. There's a bollard, so there's a drive up there to a house. Ah, oh, yeah, and here we are. Here is very obviously the old trap bed. So it was a bridge, a very, very low bridge. If they were to ever reopen it, it'd be one of those bridges where you're almost hitting your head. A bit like if you watched my Oxford video when I walked under the railway on that, I was almost hitting my head. So you can see this is where the railway line would have come across. So the junction with the main line is just up there. Now, that way, a little way, is the tunnel. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up onto the road and from the road we try and see if we can see the tunnel or not. So I'm going to continue on up there into the residential area. So from walking underneath the railway track bed, we're now going to go over the railway track bed. And here we have a very, very obvious railway bridge. So the line would have gone directly under here um, not a lot to see, we're sort of effectively in the treetops. Um, looking down there, it looks like someone's made it into part of their garden. And um, on this side, well, it doesn't look like there's much use for it. Let's have a little look. Uh, it looks, well, as you can see, it just looks very overgrown. But just up there is the tunnel. So the next road will go right over the top of the tunnel, so there probably won't be any evidence of a railway on that road. So I'm going to go right round to the other side of the tunnel, which should be near to Tunbridge Wells West Station. Whether I actually see the mouth, I don't know at this stage. It seems a bit of a shame in a way it's overgrown. You sort of think, well, from where we crossed it earlier, they can make it into a public footpath or a cycleway. We could walk directly through the tunnel to um, Tunbridge Wells West Station, but I'm going to have to go round the houses and I'm going to try and find the other end of the tunnel. So I've now come down over the hill and here we come to the truck bed again. Now, if you look there, you can see well, it's still a bit overgrown. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it out, but just about there through the trees, I can see the tunnel mouth. If they cut these trees down, we'd be able to see it a bit better. So, railway well, line went that way. Now, if we pan around here, you can see the main problem for reinstating this bit of track they've built the supermarket right on the track bed but you may just be able to see a little tower there that is Tunbridge Wells West Station the building survives it's no longer a station but we'll go and have a look around there I can just see it's pretty hard to show it on camera but there's a fence under here so we can't actually get under the bridge if it wasn't a fence I'd have walked gone down into the car park and tried to walk up to the tunnel but I just think it'd make a nice cycleway or path from you know where we were across to here but you never know, maybe that will happen, maybe one day they'll demolish the supermarket and it'll become a railway again. But now, let's walk round to Tunbridge Wells West, let's go and find the trains. I've just come along the track bed a little bit. Funny enough, where the platforms were, people now get on a bus. Because here is the old railway station with its clock tower. That's what we could see the top off from just around there. And here's the supermarket, which is um, currently on the track bed. So show you from here get quite a good view of the old railway station so the platforms would have been here the spa valley railway station is just beyond there so we're going to walk over 
and have a look at that. I'm going to take you back out here um, so we can have another look at the station. So, yeah, the railway line went that way towards the tunnel. So that it looks like the station, the old Tunbridge Wells West Station building, is now a restaurant. So you can have a, a meal in the old railway station, which is um, quite nice. Uh, anyway, I'll let you have a good look. And then the Spa Valley Railway is just across from here. So this opened in 1865, so 20 odd years after the, um, the other railway line which we came on. The line we came on was London, Brighton and South Coast. This was South Eastern Chatham Railway, so eventually it was all absorbed under the Southern Railway, but it was a um, separate railway company. So um, the, the two line, the junction between the two companies would have been back there on the other side of Grove Hill Tunnel. So I have one more look at Tunbridge Wells West, it's the old Tunbridge Wells West station. And then we'll go from the Sainsbury side of the car park, as soon as I can get across the road, into the home base side of the car park. And this is where the Spa Valley Railway is. So I'm not going to go in just yet. I have booked online um, because of the pandemic. You currently book online, so I've booked a ticket. Um, so the station building is the old engine shed. So what we'll do fairly soon when the train arrives We'll go in there and we'll have a trip on the Spa Valley Railway. So here we are in the station ticket office. This is where you would of course buy tickets um, if it wasn't for the pandemic. So coming to here, this is inside the old engine shed. So a couple of things I want to show you. They've got a lot of cool model railway, American style. And you see an LGB loco. And just down there, there's Percy, Percy of America. That's a bit, a bit different. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you through the engine shed. I've got some of the locos which um, aren't running today. So, coming to here, this is the engine shed. And we have a, a Terrier locomotive under overhaul, Sutton. I think that's probably the boiler of this Terrier locomotive. We have this shunter here, it looks like an 08, but something tells me it might not be because I'm not entirely sure. Because um, there are other diesel locos that look very similar to 08s that aren't actually 08s. There we have a Ginty, a 3F under overhaul, you can just see the number. Got a couple of industrial tank engines here. This one appears not to have a boiler at the moment. And this loco here has a rather unflattering name. She's called Ugly, which I wouldn't say she's ugly, but she's called Ugly. And I had a trip behind this loco last time I came to the Sparvo Railway a couple of years ago. So let's go out here to the yard and um, see what we've got out here. So we've got another shunter. Got class 73, there's class 20, and um, if we go to here, we have a class 31. It looks like it's a class 33 about to haul the train. Now, to get on the train, we're going to have to walk along then. I do remember when I first came in, it used to be a little miniature railway that ran up and down here, so it's like a disused railway within a disused railway. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and um, get on the train. So as we now walk along what I said was a disused railway, miniature railway, I'll show you a couple of things, mile post. So we're 49 and a half miles from somewhere. If you want to know where, please comment and tell me. We're now going to go along here. Now this is something I wanted to show you here. You know I said it used to be a miniature railway. If you look in this manhole cover, you can see there's um, some lines where the little track used to run through. So there's a bit of evidence that we are walking along with this huge miniature railway. Another thing quite amusing, look, there's a pump truck. Always wanted to have a go on one of them. Oh, and there's the tender of our steam loco, Sir Keith Park. So if we walk up here, um, we should hopefully be able to go around the front, have a look at our loco and board the train. So we're just, just going to queue up and um, we'll be going around there in a moment. 
So here is our loco, Sir Keith Park. So let's go and have a look. So Sir Keith Park is a Battle of Britain class Bully Pacific loco. Same as the West Country, it's a rebuilt Bully Pacific. So before they were rebuilt, they had the air smooth casing on locos such as Tangmere and the City of Wales, which we saw earlier this year at the Lancashire Railway. So there's Sir Keith Park in the main place. So I'm going to go and get on the train. So Keith Park's going to be on the rear of the train. I'm not actually sure which loco is going to take us towards Air Ridge, but the Keith Park is is going to bring us back here to Tunbridge Wells. I've just come down this end of the platform. The train's not going anywhere yet because there's no loco. I think it's going to be the Class 33 that's behind um, the train now. There's some interesting things down here though. We've got a few tractors and even a steam traction engine in steam. And if you look just up there, where the man's crossing beyond him, is a thumper. Now those trains, they used to work down the Uckfield line. And I do remember seeing them when I was a child. I never had a trip on one. I've since had a trip on the Hastings unit in preservation, but never had a trip on a thumper. So maybe another day we'll come and have a ride on the thumper. But now I'm going to wait for our loco to see what's going to take us down the line towards Eric. enjoying my trip on the Spa Valley Railway. Now as you can see, there's another track beside me. Now this isn't a double track heritage railway like the Great Central. That is the network rail line to Uckfield. So for almost a mile, the Spa Valley Railway and network rail run parallel like this. It's the only heritage railway that does this over any length. And then we'll get to Eridge, and that's an interchange station. So normal times you could actually come here by train to Eridge, but at the moment you can come like I did to Tunbridge Wells and it's, it's not a long walk between the two stations. So I'm going to continue on towards Eridge and join the views of the countryside of Kent and East Sussex. Now here we are at our destination, Eridge. Our train's behind us there, the Class 33, which brought us here, is right down there under the bridge. So we'll go and have a look in a minute, but it's um, not the easiest. To see and down there attracting a lot of attention is our steam locomotive. So what I would have done had they not been redoing the bridge I'd have run over the other side but because they're redoing the bridge to get to the other side I've got, I'd have to go all the way out there round up along the road and down so um, I'm not going to be able to do that today. So um, there just isn't time there's only 15 minutes I probably could if I really ran but um, um, I'm not going to do it. So that would give us a really good view of the loco. Be good um, if you ever were here, you could come here and watch the train arrive and depart if you weren't travelling, it would give you quite a good view. We do have a very nice southern region railway station here at Eridge. So the only way in and out of the station at the moment, or, or out of this side of the station, is via those steps there. See the steam heating's working, which is um, always good on a cold day. Very atmospheric, seeing all the steam coming out of the carriages. And uh, I'll show you what I mean about our loco. First 3063. There she is under the bridge. So they've just put a new set of steps in. So that's why we can't go on the other side, but maybe we will another day. I'm going to go and get back on the train now and um, enjoy a steam haul journey back to Tunbridge Wells West. I really enjoyed my trip on the Sparvo Railway behind Sir Keith Park and behind the Class 33 33063. I'm going to leave the railway now. I'm going to walk back up past the old Tunbridge Wells West station up to the Pantiles. So I thought before we leave 
Tunbridge Wells, show you the pan tiles. Now, another thing, further down the line, is High Rocks Holt. Now, the train wasn't stopping there today. It was a non-stop through to Eridge because of the pandemic. Groombridge Station is open if you want to sit there, have a cup of tea and watch trains. But the station High Rocks, there are these high rocks which you can go and visit. Now, I would really like to do that, but I'm not going to do it today. But there are some other rocks in the area. So the plan is we're going to go for a walk. And once we've seen the Pantiles, the most famous street in Tunbridge Wells, we will go up and um, look for some of these rocks. So I'm going to leave the old and the current Tunbridge Wells West Station behind us and we're going to head up into the town. Well, here we are in the Pantiles. This is the most famous street in Tunbridge Wells. It's a lovely street of shops. It was all built in, or well, most of it was built in 1644. It's um, a very attractive place to walk through. So I'm now, I've walked down from Tunbridge Wells West. I'm heading back this way, back towards Tunbridge Wells West Station. And then from there, I'm going to go for a little walk. I'm not walking to the high rocks, but I'm going to go and try and find some rocks because I think it'd be a shame not to see some rocks if you come to Tunbridge Wells. So I'm just going to let you see, I'm going to pan round the pan tiles before I carry on up to the rocks. Well, from the built up area of Tunbridge Wells at the pan tiles, I've come up through the common to the rocks. Now the rock we're going to go and finish up is called Toad Rock. You'll see why when we get there. But have a look at this, this path is taking us down through the rocks. Now, all along this valley, all the way to Eridge, there's these outcrops of rocks, which are all rather fascinating. I'd really like to one day explore them further. There's the high rocks, which um, the Sparvey Railway does have a station at, which maybe we'll go to in the future. There's other ones near Eridge. And here we have all these rocks here. There's various other rocks further along, which um, the more I see, the more I sort of want to explore it. But I have to leave some of them for another day. But I did want to show you this set of rocks here. So we've got some rocks in there, which we're going to have a look at in a minute, moment. Some rocks there. It's a bit weird, these rocks, how they're like in line with the roof of these houses. But if we go up here, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to show you some of the most impressive areas of this bit of rock, which is known as Toad Rock. Um, so the rocks go all off over there. Here we have some smaller boulders. It's this area here, though. The rocks I want to show you now, this is going to be quite interesting to try and do it through a camera. Um, let's go and have a look at the view first to get to here. You can see there's various rocks, there's people over there climbing on the rocks. So we'll go round there. We've got to try and make our way to down there. So let's go the fun way down. So look at that. There's a hole in the rock, so it can't be rude not to go through it. So see if I can get myself through there with a the camera. It might be easier said than done as I said. It's gonna be a bit hard getting out this crack at the end of a camera. I'll have a go at it. Ooh, out we go. Just gotta get right down and crawl through. Oh, and here we are. So I've just come through that crack in the rocks now. If we have a look. Look at that there's like a boulder sitting on top of another rock. So, pack it through here with the camera. Yeah, I think I'm just about managing. Let's go down here. It's like being um, a bit like Dartmoor or the Peak District. We sort of don't expect this here in Kent. And then down here, this should take us down to where we just looked out from a moment ago. I'll just turn the camera so you can see the view forward. But I can't swing it round. So, let me have a look. There we go. I know it's overexposed. Looking out. Oh, here we go. Come out here. Reminds me a bit of Ludd's Church as well. Have a look at that video. Coming on strip green now. See, I've just come out that crack in the rocks. Let's go around here. So I mentioned it's called the Toad Rock, well, there's your answer, that rock there, looks a bit like a big toad sitting there, so um, you can see there's people up on top of those rocks, I don't know, it's very sandy as well, look how sandy it is, I feel like I'm walking on the beach now, it's um, very, very 
sort of bizarre, strange landscape, but I really like it. So I do think one day I'm going to have to come here and just explore the rocks of the area. Um, but in the meantime, it's made a great day out. Had a trip on the Spa Valley Railway, great riding behind the Bully Pacific's uh, Keith Park. I had a lovely walk up onto the common, seen the pantiles, um, and now we're seeing these rocks. Look at this. It's all that weird steps I've got to go up there. Can I get up there for camera? Just about to get up here and finish with a view well, over the um, where we've just been. Didn't expect to be quite rock climbing like this today. And there we go. Oh, and from here we get a rather good view of the toad, the toad rock. So from the toad rock, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, do come visit the Spa Valley Railway. Um, it's lovely railway and you can do this walk as well. It makes a great day out and it's not too far from London. So thank you very much for watching from the toad rock. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>